Hello and welcome to the Learn Dota 2 League Season 12, Week 7, the end yeah, of the group final stage. Week. Today Not we're the taking final final week, but yep. you know. Today we're taking a look at the NWA versus my beautiful Dark Willow Twisted Fantasy. Oh, I guess we're not. Never mind. See you next week, folks. Ten seconds remaining. Next week's playoffs. That'll be fun. Yeah. We gotta decide which playoff match we're watching. We already have decided because we gotta get oh, a yeah. GG's game in. Oh. We're so we're gonna get okay. the Lich again. Two weeks two in lich, a row. Two Lich games in a row. Yeah. Which I did not plan, it just ended up being like that. Radiant Brackets are out, by the way, I believe. Yes, sir. So. I don't know how they're going to be scheduled. There's no schedule for it. I assume same time and everything, but you know. Right. We'll see. We'll see. I also, uh... I also know the fate of this game, because goddamn Gotham literally just straight up came to my goddamn uh, Twitch stream when we were doing this live, and just told us how this game, how this series went down. Yeah. Thanks to Gotham, for so, the show. Sh yeah, shoutouts to Gotham. I hope I never, I hope I never see or talk to that guy again. Alright, the Peach is Shakiro. Gotta get one yep. last weekend of that. Yep. I am actually genuinely a little surprised NWA actually got two games in this last. I, I really kind of expected them to just uh, call the FF here. I guess credit to them. They actually didn't stick it out to the end. Yeah, they showed up. Every team did in the last week, even the whole... Well, I guess not even the hopeless ones. He's the only genuinely hopeless ones were out anyway. I think Tupac was... Play. I think Tupac was uh, also... I think Tupac had the same record as uh, Doomed. No, they were five seven team. Uh, really? Are you yeah. sure? I'm sure. They had a buy. They had a buy and they had one series where they went two and zero. I think. Did they? I think. They won one one of the series. Right. I'm confident they were. They were on the very bottom of contending games. They were five seven. Okay. Yeah, I feel like uh, even with that being said, there wasn't actually mathematically a way they could possibly even make it with the tiebreaker, though. Right. I think they were just genuinely super out. It's going to be interesting to see uh, some of the teams that are, like, out of contention here, if they're going to really make a big effort at it. You know, NWA, walking into this match, you know, fairly unlikely. They need a 2-0 to be able to contend. They actually would have made the uh, tiebreaker they did. They're actually the top of the tie-breaking teams as far as score went, at least yep. when this series went down. You know, no, no say Lich might have actually ended up with the highest tiebreaker. I think they did actually after uh, facing Panic, but still. Um, yeah. I can tell you this much, right? Oh, got a Hoodwink here. All right. Kiro and Hoodwink against the LC and the Wyvern. You know, Wyvern and LC seems like a combo that could really lead to either glory or complete disaster based on execution. Right. Like, that is a Winter Wyvern that can really mess your team up, but on the like other hand... Like, a first patch Winter Wyvern and LC might have been extremely broken, but those days are oh, long yeah. gone, unfortunately. Ten seconds remaining. Let's use this uh, little bit of downtime to complain about the system. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. I like the Swiss Round Robin system for every other week but Week 7. I really feel like moving forward they should put Week 7 together intelligently, like manually set well, the I matches like, up. I like the Swiss if it's actually a Round Robin, if every team actually faces every other team, but right. that wasn't the case. Right, right. Well, the Swiss Round Robin system, even if that isn't the case, still makes sense, I think. Just trying to match nearly equal teams with each other, but I really feel like... The week sevens in the future should probably be intellectually put together. Like, he had a lot of really disproportionate teams take each other on in the week seven. A lot of really not competitive matches or matchups are really happening in this. You know, like, uh, for example, you know, Tupac. I think Tupac is a better team than their, uh, than their win rate led on, but putting them against the goddamn GGs for their final match, like, that is really messed up. That really. That's completely just was no not disrespect. very yeah no no disrespect but it just wasn't a fair matchup to be honest with you there were a lot of actually still undone matchups i i feel like if i you know if you sat down and you looked at it i feel like you could actually construct manually a a uh week seven full of unique matchups 
Though you would have to do a redo on the backdoor GGs to really make that possible. But you could do a bunch of unique matchups that aren't like really hideous, like disproportionate, one sided sort of affairs. Like in particular, uh, one thing I would do is I would manually, I would, I would redo, I'd, I'd do a redo on two of the top series, but they b both were kind of washes. I do a redo on um, on GG's and Backdoor because that literally didn't happen, and I do a redo on Panic and uh, Radiant Straits since when that did happen, Radiant Straits was really in no condition to compete. That's true. And then from there, I think you could really do the rest of the roster easily. But I'm just a caster, so you know, above station, I suppose. When I'm when I'm talking about that, what do you think, Randy? Yeah, uh, sure. I don't do scheduling. Well, there you go. Knocking out some interesting folks here. Uh, while we were talking about that, looks like NWA is really looking at Iceman in particular with some of these bands. Though, you also have a little bit of targeting on the uh, on the Luth there, the bands yep. like the Wraith King. On the other hand, looks like. Willow Twisted Fantasy, really, uh, it's kind of banning a very large variety of heroes here. Not much of a consistent clear theme. Got, uh, got some Ditch guys, you got some, uh, Luke's guys, you got some, some, uh, Dogtown guys, Dogtown guys, you got some, uh, he's on another team, you got Dogtown some guys, Manifest some Destiny guys. Radiant team. Alright, Snap. Snap, Laverne, another combo that could either be a major disaster or uh, really good, depending on I execution. Not a major disaster, necessarily, because uh, the Snap ulti is super easy to time with uh, Winner's Curse, and even right. if it isn't, you know... It's less the Snap ult is easy to time with the Winner's Curse, and more it's really bad if they have a Snapfire ult come in and then Winner Laverne as a mis as a Miskin ult. Uh, the, snap, the Snap ult lingers and it out... What am I trying to say? It's longer than the Winter River duration, so... I don't think so. I don't think that's actually true. Getting called out on stream here. Or I'm recording, I guess, rather. I hope we're not streaming, not this would be close. a weird time to stream. Yeah. Hello if you're here at 1.30am watching old Dota games. If you're here, uh, why are you here? Go, go yeah. prepare, man. It's playoffs. It's true, yeah, yeah. We, we ended up doing this super late this week. We're probably... We might not have a pre-show just because we probably are not going to have seen enough of the matches by yeah. Saturday night to uh, to say much interesting. Got a Spirit Breaker up here. It's interesting. It, it's probably going to be... Uh, Three Spirit Breaker, probably gonna be Luke Spirit Breaker. It's you a Snap Bolt and Wyvern Ult that a uh, max level are actually exactly the same duration. Literally the same. So, alright. There we go. The, uh. It's gonna be an interesting thing. You know. Spirit Breaker to this point, mostly seeing him Gotham on the NWA. Here he's almost certainly going to be playing a core role, unless we're going to have a core hoodwink of some description. Which does not seem to be a very popular thing, the LD2L. Oh, for Ricky. Alright. We're finally going to see that Manifest Destiny Ricky again. Yeah, it's coming back. For the he's final been week, banned the against final time him. this lineup ever plays together, it's going to be a... Well, the second to last one. time. Nice. Uh, spoilers, NWA did not series. make it. Sure, I know the I know the bracket coming in. Right. Five seconds remaining. It's two teams that ended up uh, almost having a cursed affair in this uh, in this season. You know, if there's any if there's any week seven matchup that definitely makes sense, it's this one. Just the two lost souls of this tournament. You I know, was it, flaming out. Just uh, the two teams that had the most tragic rise and fall you know week one these were two of the three top teams and uh now they're here bashing each other for, for eighth Radiant team back. Admiral Kunka. Kunka. all right Kunka. likely gonna be Boy, there nice too man, yeah 
definitely a pick that a lot of people on Willow do not want to see. If you're Willow, if you're your Spirit Breaker, Kunkka, not the guy you want to be dealing with. If you're Ricky, Kunkka, not the guy you want to be dealing with. If you're Hoodwink, Kunkka, not the guy you want to be dealing with. I mean, Jakiro can take care of him to some degree, actually, because Kunkka kind of moves predictably in a fight. But everyone else, uh, not so great. Not so great. PL out of the runnings here. PL certainly uh, a hero with a disproportionately high ban rate compared to his pick rate here. Feels like we've seen PL ban maybe three or four to one versus PL picked. So you need a mid and a one. Yep. Well, it's just a fantasy with second Huskar. That would have been certainly a very not nasty thing for uh, Will it was fantasy to be dealing with a Huskar there. It's one of those heroes that. You know, with LC, really, really can create a very messed up situation. Can be a guy who is really just, just difficult to kill. She just can't do him at all. Just get her ass kicked. Or, you know, if she gets ballin, could be the other way around. Though, I do feel like in most situations, it's going to be Huskar is just going to be an undoable target. And you can definitely tell with this lineup, it is going to be a lot about the duel. Though it is noticeable, they don't have that much. It's like it seems like the strategy for Willow. So. Right. Seems like the the I don't mean not much to follow up the duel. I just don't, I mean not much cohesion right. for that follow up. It seems like the idea for me is like Wyvern ults offside to try and get people out of the duel and the, like yeah the, the snap on sticks boat. out. I think um if they play this lineup in in like a three man death ball kind of way where Wyvern's just there to you know mess people up afterwards or mess people up if it goes wrong. Right. No Wyvern is the disengage or the, uh, the the chase. Yep. Whereas, you know, if you duel someone and drop a snap hold in a boat on their head, they're probably gonna die no matter who they are. Right. Especially they're Ricky, because Ricky is uh, yeah. both a prime target for this that and uh, has the least to do to survive. But he's not gonna be the oh, one today. God. It's gonna be Alchemist. What? Oh, could be mid. What? I, can you repeat that for me, Randy? You don't think Elk mid is good? It's it's pretty common. I would say it's like his um, if if I see an alchemist, I, I kind of mentally place him mid. Dota is truly in a dark age. It's just because I don't play him mid. Do you think that? It seems like that's like the most easily ganked thing in the entire universe. Like that seems like it's such a massive risk, especially against a hero like Kunkka who can have the X yeah, on him and everything. It's definitely easily ganked uh, before level six for sure. Luna. Especially with a lineup like this, like you have Kunkka who can keep him still. You have the uh, you have the LC who can duel him, which is not something you ever want to be dealing with. Danger Doom is not actually going to be a stand-in, I don't believe. That is just, uh... Oh no, he is a stand-in, actually, isn't he? Because he's uh, in for Alexa Jax. Yep. No, it's going to be Alk 3, actually. Alk 3, Let's Hoodwink see. 2. They might flex the lanes here, I don't think that makes sense. I think it's more likely yeah. that Hoodwink's uh, just standing in the off lane. Basically, it could be. It could be. Gotham on the Spirit Breaker once again. So kind of uh, going against our prediction there. Yep. We've seen some funny lane uh, nonsense from the NWA before, though I must say I can't recall a time it went particularly well. This Ricky and Alchemist combo. I don't know. I just I'm not really about this one. Not really about this NWA lineup. I feel like I I, I understand it, it might be common. I just do not feel like Alchemist is well suited to be anything but one. He's too greedy. He needs too much money to like work. And, you know, Grievel's greed seems like it should logically fill in lower, but it really doesn't because he also needs a lot more gold to do well for himself. You know. Very, very gold-dependent hero, so... Right. I don't know. 
Maybe the, I, I'm sure the Kid Dynamite's gonna be in the comments being like, Well, you know, fucking some... Some guys at TI were doing this. Or whatever. <laughs> mid Alchemist? Yeah, I don't yeah. think Alchemist has picked that much of TI. Maybe a couple times. You know, they were picking the flashier heroes, not your kind of sit around and fight and get kills by doing nothing heroes like Elk. Right. Gonna do some, uh, some pre round shenanigans. Gonna start tipping people for some reason. Yeah. Always a classic. Very, it's going to be a very tense series here. You know, uh, both both of these teams have the potential to get on the bracket. At the very least, they do at this point, so... Yeah, it loses this game, won't. Yeah. It's, it's definitely going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see if the guys who are going to be unable, once the guys are mathematically eliminated, or at least el mentally eliminated, how they uh, continue to play. They're going to try and uh, at least take the other guys down with them. Ricky getting uh, pretty, yeah. pretty caught here. Though uh, his buddies are there to uh, get right. him out. Yeah, got the blink strike target. Two for two for bounties. So uh, Paich is going to suffer very, for it. Very violent two for two. And indeed, it is going to be an Alc Med on Luke. So a very interesting setup. You got a two man med with uh, Paich. Just no, just nah, Paich is just sure warding. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't like this in general, but I do not like this combo either. This uh, this little matchup here. Iceman, clueless. Looks like uh, Alka is sponsored by Victor. Wonder if that's uh, Otto von that Bismarck. The he's sponsored by. Could be. Could be he's uh, Vic Vaughn, Otto von Bismarck. I meant the movie Clueless, but. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that would make sense. <laughs> what, what movie did you think I was talking about? I thought there was a movie just called Victor. Favorite movie, Victor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be. There's a lot of just name movies yeah, out that's recently. Yeah, true. That's true. They're just pulling creeps, everybody. Is Ditch playing four? He is playing. I think. I could be. Getting last hits. At least got that last hit. I don't know. Yeah, I'll... I got that last hit because Ditch wasn't there, so we'll have to see once yeah. the lane kind of stabilizes. Gossam's a three, okay, well. It's time for everybody's favorite segment, the calls. I was just running, running old uh, Danger Doom here over. On the NWA, pause one. We've got Manifest Destiny on the Ricky. Pause two. Usually this would be Dig, but today it's Luke's on uh, the Alchemist. Pause three, you got the Spirit Breaker. Gotham, pause three. Usually pause four. He's also the captain of the team. Pause four, traditionally pause two. Didge on the hoodwink. And pause five, traditionally pause five. Paiches, as traditionally on the Jakiro. Yeah. Well, at Tristan Fantasy, you got Luth here on the uh, on the Luna. Down at mid, we've got Iceman. By the way, Luth captain of the team on pause one. Iceman, pause two on the Kanka. On three, we got Ramanolo on the uh, Legion Commander. Pause four, we got Hellscream on the. Uh, He's get the slow yep, out. On first yep. blood there. Hellscream on the uh, Snapfire. And pause five, we got Winter Wolverine on the Winter Wolverine. Playing yourself! No, we got Danger Doom. Standing in, I believe. For Alexa Jax. Snap with those two skills plus CLC damage from the Q, we can just. Erase someone from the lane. Right. Did not catch you littering. On one hand, um, you have a few I'm in element now, but it is a good uh, combination of people, I think, for the duel. On the other hand, it's getting I will beat say, up here. It's getting beat up by it's an elk. Probably just uh, standing in the seven up a lot. Notably, very, elk also very beat up. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, three. Very violent lane, everyone yeah. kind of limping away. But as I was saying, 
NWA really doesn't have a lot that's going to be able to stand up to the duels, I don't think. Especially one particularly uh, disastrous thing that could happen. If Elsie's able to duel Alk before he ults, he's dead. Just simple, that's it. Game over for him. Oh. Ricky, uh, if he ever gets dueled, he's dead. Her right. cores are very vulnerable to it. Even Spearbreaker, not really a great hero to survive a duel. He can mess with one pretty easily, but he's not great at surviving one per se. Better, but still not, like, you know, at the top of the list. Especially, uh, I mean, if he bulldozes in advance, the duel's like two seconds long, so, you know. There is that. He has some vulnerable cores, and the supports are really not great at, at helping that out. I mean... Jakiro can ult. That's pretty much uh, the extent of his ability to do something in a duel, and that's yeah, more I'm, useful. It's more useful the other way around. I don't think a macro pyre is gonna necessarily out damage like a snapple plus a boat. Right. And it's a lot harder to time. You know, when you have LC on your lineup, you know v usually if you're communicating, you know vaguely when LC is gonna be hitting you. You know when uh, yep. she's gonna be rolling in. She's gonna be doing her stuff. But when it's uh, on the other team, you're you're playing reactive. It's not not as easy. Not as easy. You're going going to be a little bit more likely, I think, to be a little late on it. Iceman uh, giving Alk the respect by not actually uh, knocking his sab off of him there and allowing him to uh, get back to full. Yeah, there you go. And then dropping a boat yeah, right on his head. He's dropping everything and he on his head. Uh, oh. missed the combo. Oh, well, that's man. not good. He missed a combo and Alk hit six. Just wanted to go for that that's kill uh, before the six on Alk, I assume. Missed a uh, kill up top while that was happening. Kunga actually stayed really low. He went down to 20 HP that's there. Max himself and TP back. Yep. Very that's valuable asset. Business. Well, he was not drinking the bottle when he was in fountain there. But he is at least going to be drinking it when he's back home. Yeah, that was a very awkward little encounter there, I gotta say. Very awkward encounter. Kunkka missing his combo. Elk not quite uh, going in on him there. Very interesting. I don't know how much uh, Kunkka, old Iceman, is going to be playing. Hard to tell from here. I guess we'll see after the match. But, uh... Yeah. Just had a very awkward encounter. So I'm gonna say to that one. Haste. Kunkka coming in uh, hot here at bot. Yeah, he is. LC so not actually six. Look. Very close to six. You could actually get six from this kill and get Ricky. Or uh, get your hero, I guess. Oh, she hit six. Perfect timing on it. Yeah, yeah. Ding, 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 and he's dead. No, he's dead, yeah. Oof. Nice try. Radiant's bottom tower. There so, you go. First duel of the game. Yep, first duel of the game here at uh, only six minutes. Literally the moment LC hit the level. It's always a very satisfying a outcome for you. It's good efficiency and it's good just uh, good feeling. Good feeling in your bones. Also put off Ricky six, not for long, I would imagine. Well, actually, he looks—he's uh, down for XP quite a bit. So he might be—he uh, might be out for a while there. Any time you can put on Ricky getting six is pretty good for you. Just makes it a little harder for them to operate. No, Ricky feels like they're safe without it. Truth is, they're really not. Both getting jumped on here at top, though. Uh, Winter Revern basically alone here, able to completely just stop anything from happening. Denied. That's What's certainly one thing Wyvern has. Uh, Wyvern, very strong laner. So, you know, she kind of, uh, you know, she kind of is a bit of a misfit as far as this lineup for Willow goes. If nothing else, there's an obvious utility in just having her just secure lane for the uh, Luna here. Right. Just as you can tell by the last hit chart, she's done to a pretty good degree. Look at the net worth chart here. Alchemist in for the first place. He's actually done a little bit better than I thought of himself in this mid lane here, though. Not exactly exceptional. Welsh was a fantasy. Missing some opportunities, I think, to uh, get rid of the guy. Yep.
Though he is going to be in the awkward position in the mid game of uh, having a fight for money with Ricky, and that's uh, it's always a tough spot, you know. Always a tough spot for Alchemist to be in, having to fight for somebody, fight with somebody for farm, because you know, yeah. who who do you give the stacks to, right? You got stacks, who do you give them to? Well, Alchemist. You give them to Alchemist. But then, you know, Ricky is going to go the, the game without him. He's Ricky's basically going to really be your boss too here. The funny combat music is fights happening in both lanes, totally getting knocked over by the uh, Kunkin's Snapfire combo. Got a lot of magic damage in a very short amount of time there between the two of them. Spirit Breaker seems to have uh, seems to be under the belief that uh, Old Laverne uh, skipped town. It's not actually the case. First tower of the game goes down. You'll never guess which one it was. There you go. Classic time honored LD two L tradition. Ricky uh, just beating up a single centaur. It's always something, something kind of sad about watching somebody do one jungle creep. Just, just a very empty How feeling. feeling. Yeah. Okay, about to run into the uh, the snapfire here. I see him. Yeah. Sees the snap. I mean, the other way around is not true. Yeah. No detection on Ricky there. He's gonna just take a big. Big chunk of his HP get knocked off by the Tiebringer. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, let's get slept. Tiebringer, not one of the nicer skills to uh, deal with as a Ricky, for obvious reasons. Oh, oh coming in. And here comes a duel, and there oh, goes the yeah. Snapfire. I like the cookie in the middle of that. Meanwhile, at top, though, the uh, Spirit Breaker and uh, Jakira were able to run over the Laverne there. I would certainly say the duel probably a little bit more valuable overall than that. I was also able to, uh, enough to get LC or Blink. Right. Against this particular lineup, that's going to be, uh, it's going to be big. I mean, LC Blink is always pretty big. This lineup does not have a lot of great answers to that. Uh, Alchemist getting uh, bullied here. Fairly unlikely to die. Especially a Spirit Breaker playing point guard like this. Yep. Nothing else, it is I going to be. It is a very good uh, good sign. Yeah. Well, Trusted Fantasy have not been doing a great job trying to put any sort of thumb down on him. Assuming so I suppose as he can just win early. As long as Elk is allowed to exist, he just. Builds himself that pile of money, it's exponential. I would also note that on the other hand, he's not worth, not really, I mean, he's first place in net worth, not by a huge amount, not not by an alchemist lead by, by any stretch. He's got quite a few people kind of on his uh, trail, too. Another boat coming in. Oh he's boy. Under the uh, snap bolt there, and Kiro's just dead instantly. Here you go, that's uh, that combo I was talking about in draft. Spear Breaker coming in. Coming up from the north. I don't know if he really is going to like what he finds here. Well, I guess he is. Uh, everyone kind of in the perfect position for that. Oh, Kunkka oh, gets a stun on the Alk. Good. That's very good. Now Alk's just going to go beat up Hoodwink for a while. Knock out about half her HP and only half the Wyvern ult. That's, We're going to uh, say the timing on that tour was intentional. Could be a nice size, man. I think it was. I think it genuinely yeah, it kind was. Of it genuinely looked like it could have been. So, yeah, the uh, Vern, as you as you sort of uh, alluded to the early portion of the game, there just kind of holding ult for disengage there, which I think is the right yep. call. I think it is a right play. Just Vern's entire purpose in life is to uh, splinter blast, heal, and. She can, Hold when it's time she, also, uh, she can use it to kill someone after the dual combo is out. Also true, yeah. Dyer's top tower is under you could also sort of barricade people off size. That was my theory. Just barricade people yep. off size while the duel is happening otherwise. Alchemist has ult again here. Kunk could just see what he can kind of poke. Casually, the boat most out. casual boat in the All world right. actually landed too. 
forces Elk to uh, bring the ult out at least as they kind of uh, yep. walk away here. Kanka still kind of won the fight he's, actually. He's looking. But uh, I'm not looking anymore. He's yeah. soft looking. Kanka's off the market, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, if you were uh, if you were planning to respond to Kunkka's uh, tender profile, I'm afraid that will no longer be an option for you. Yeah. It's okay. It was mostly uh, troll accounts made by Titaner anyway. Kind of big worryingly, there. worryingly untouched hero over here is the Luna with the full farm build. Luna with the full farm build. You know who's a, who else is a uh, untouched hero? Is the LC who's three and zero and that is true. Has a Load a duel through your oh. name. Oh. Ah, okay. oh, but the cookie though. Cookie on the wrong target. Curse. Uh oh. Well, that's fine. No duel? Yeah, no duel here. I would, yep. Guess that's the downside to uh, to duel in a situation like that. It is going to be down for a minute. Spear breaker coming back in, really desperate to get the uh, kill there. Oh, that was a good attempt at the uh, at the funny little cookie save, but no such luck. Yep. Alchemist uh, rolling in here. Has to turn around because uh, LC is kind of going crazy. Boat is dropped. Oh, Alchemist boy. is looking really low. He's gone. Spear looking Vessel really is enough dead. to get him down. Another dual victory on LC. Oh, yeah. Ramanolo, to this point in the tournament, has not been showing us a great, a great LC, to be honest with you. I mean... Somewhere between serviceable and not quite so serviceable, really, so far in the tournament. But this game, man, this game has been uh, looking good, looking very good. And the team does have a lot to do with that. I think that's been one issue with the Willow Twist and Fantasy lineups. They've been drafting some LCs in some kind of subpar situations a few times. But even in light, you know, e even if you're looking at more than just the... Uh, just the fact that it's a great team for LC. I think the duel are coming out on the right target at a very good time. Yep. Definitely, uh, definitely showing improvement on the LC there, which is good. Definitely good. Spear Breaker charging right in here. LC wants him, but uh, LC's gonna get stunned. Oh, he actually does get him without the bulldoze too. But everyone's so far from her. She actually almost loses the well, duel before she finally yeah, goes down to Alk, no less. Ouch. That was a little too much, I think. She's getting very... She's trying to death... to throw that death wall a little farther than the uh, warranty covers. Right. Kind of uh, a little farther than the warranty covers. They are able to. Uh, they are able to bait out quite a heavy response there for Luna, just poking her head out for a moment, but still unable to defend. Excuse me, defend the tower at all. Gold for my chest. No, Luna uh, already has her ult pretty much online this yep. early. That's kind of the. Uh, well, she does have a level two form. Lucian Bane, so it's not really online. It's the benefit of a full farm Luna build is that she can. Uh, be online pretty quick. I mean, she's gonna have those two levels pretty quickly if she keeps farming at this pace. I'm looking at the Ricky here. Super looking at the Ricky, but he does purge that X off. They have no vision on him. Yep. Spearbreaker, Spearbreaker charging in. Wants, uh, wants something to happen to the, to the LC here, but... Nobody really looks too enthusiastic about doing much. Ricky's turning back around, doesn't want to fight. Kind of bumps into uh, Wyvern here. Gonna just take her on instead. Okay. Elsie looking to get something on, but she really shouldn't. Hoodwink gets rid of the Wyvern with the ult. Alk has uh, finished the Radiance. He's gonna put a bit of a damper in the dual strategy, but not that much of one. Oh, oh no, Spear Breaker! Yeah, Spearbreaker actually rolls her over there. She's super low. That's something that uh, that Willow Twisted Fantasy definitely have to be looking out for. Is uh, in WA at the very least, they have a lot of uh, they have a lot of ways to just pick. They have a lot of ways to just reach out and uh, touch somebody here. Yeah. He takes out the Ice Man and then immediately dies for it. Spearbreaker just bouncing away. Now uh, Elstream gonna get messed up here. 
Very chaotic fight. For the most part, all good news for the NWA. Yep. Though notably, they did fail to get the Luna. It was still completely untouched. Farming I believe at this point, the only person in the game was yet to take a death. Yep. Couple only one, but... NWA actually did a really good th a good thing there in that fight by uh, splitting two sides out of uh, Willow Twisted Fantasy. When they're split up like that, really lose out on a lot of cohesion really quickly. Yeah, for sure. They're coming in on the LC again here. Some they are. They opt for... Snap going to get snapped. They're still likely going to get the LC, actually. Yeah. LC definitely overestimating, I think, her uh, tankiness, unfortunately. Perhaps underestimating NWA's ability to just reach out and crush somebody. You know, things started great for this LC. They're turning around for her very quickly. And it's, uh... I do think there is an element of overestimation of her own ability to survive damage and own ability to sort of uh, be out with that. One thing for sure, they're gonna not they, with the SV wall. Right. One thing for sure, they wanna they want to uh why are we having the funny combat music? They wanna have something good going on for them here. They definitely need to get a better uh setup for vision than this. Your vision isn't horrible, but they need better you always need to have not not horrible vision, you need to have good vision if you're facing a spirit breaker lineup, especially spirit breaker with Ricky lineup. Yep. They have okay vision. Acceptable vision. Oh That's boy. Not enough. Another big duel here. Ramanolo immediately winning it. Just mere seconds is enough to, do, to get it done. Spirit Breaker Shadow Blades out. And again, there's not really any response to that. Right. I think, uh, let's check it out. Yeah, the only person carrying uh, dust on Willow Twisted Fantasy is Snapfire. She's isn't great because she's uh, occupied during her ult, so if somebody's invis during the ult, nothing she can do about it. Definitely need to uh, get that set up on a few more people. I think LC could definitely drop this uh, extraneous slot to carry it around for at least a while. Could replace uh, Quilling with it if uh, something fills up that slot fairly shortly. Like, for example, uh, a Lotus Orb. I can't wait for the point in the game where LC charges right back at Spirit Breaker. That'll be funny. That would be funny. Alchemist has just retired to a life of farming and is starting to actually carry, you know, start running away with a gold lead. Yep. Notably at this point, the lane, the laning phase is really just has no more bearing on like reality for the NWA like at this point Ricky is arguably like a just the pause three and there is no pause two for their lineup basically you just got two different possibilities oh good uh, good stop the spirit breaker charge there though this isn't probably where they wanted this to go oh, how shows up with the ult up spirit breaker is uh, knocked out here Ricky in a very bad way, but not much ability to capitalize on that. Notably, uh, the LC is out of affairs here. Down goes that... Uh-oh. Down goes that Luna. Iceman to follow. Ouch. That's problematic. Yeah. <laughs> All that money goes to Elk. Yep. We've got... Yeah, you got all but one kill in that team fight there. Under it's very rare that you're in a situation where it's like four protect one on your mid, but that's really what we're looking at here. Basically, yep. you have four protect one in the mid. If nothing else, at the very least, uh, having the spirit breaker really just still building four as three. It's probably not the worst idea in the world. They really did. Uh, they traded an entire core, basically, for getting Alchemist's kind of farm. So I suppose yep. what you need to do when he's not your one. Certainly going to be good for now, but uh, funnily enough, it, and this is something that's not usually the case for Alk teams, 
they do definitely do have a shelf life for this. There's going to be a point where Alchemist alone is not going to be able to stand up to that lineup. They're going to be having some pretty bad problems when that comes to be the case. Right. Ricky is just not going to scale to that point. Not with this kind of money for sure. Spear Breaker misplicks a creep, I think. Yeah, some more to get over here, I'm sure. Ricky drawing some attention on himself. Drawing some I smoke out. Is. Oh Look boy. Both Can't first trouble. Destroyed that. Yep. Yep. Can't destroy all this, however. Goodbye. Uh, that's true. It's he definitely goal. cannot destroy all that. <laughs> a lunar and blessing plus a dual victory damage. That is some pretty insane damage on LC for this point, who has not really built anything to uh, right click herself going entirely off dual here. Especially if um, Luna gets to trade where it's global, which won't right. be that big, because I think Luna will be in these fights generally anyway, but... Right. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And notably, just uh, that alone has already pulled Luna back up into... He sort of can... Uh-oh. This isn't good. Sapphire ult comes in to try and bail her out, but that was yeah, not the really teleport bad. you wanted to see. Kira just going to get curse. evaporated by the uh, Winner's Curse here. Hell C gets assassinated by Hoodwink and pretty much dies instantly as a result. Boat's coming in, hits nobody. Oh man, Elk. Willow Twisted Fantasy just getting really cleaned up here after such a great start. This is, uh, wheels are starting to really fall off here. Right, the elk just kind of walked all over them in that fight. You know, there's sort of a bookend to the uh, NWA here, I feel like. Sort of a bookend sort of uh, way for this season to be going. Because I feel like um, the, th the analysis I had in the... Uh, in the first match up they had against MF Doomed, the thing I said was that on paper, NWA should lose this, but in execution, the other team kind of misplayed what they had, and NWA did a good job with the, you know, in spite of TM. I feel like that's kind of what we're looking at here. Like, on paper, I would not give this lineup to NWA, like, any day of the week. I feel like, to be honest with you, this is a kind of a weak draft but in execution and actually getting it done they're doing a very good job playing to its strength trying to avoid its weaknesses and um, I feel like there is an element of misplay coming in for the for the Willow Chosen Fantasy yeah. as well Make though the Rick here in the Rick there. at the very least the uh, the game plan is still the same you know they're having some issues and uh, doing much about it In a very good fight here at the very least. When uh when neither Alk nor Spearbreaker are present, NWA really has nothing to say for themselves. The uh the other three guys, including their alleged pause one, really just kinda go down in no time flat. Radiant Is this uh is this what we're doing with the NWA? Like uh we don't like Manifest Destiny, so we're gonna write him off as pause one and just make Luke's our pause one instead. Alright. Sure. Just de facto pause one anyway. Spearbreaker charging right into the rush pit here. Yeah, he certainly is. Just bulldozing right back out, just buying time basically. Oh, uh, Alex here. They have to clear out. He's going to blow up though. Yeah, that's fine. Dyer's top tower is under attack. The winner of Vernal does not up. Yeah. Duel is. Quite a little. It's an interesting Fight spat. Like I said, if they get Alk without his ult, he is going to die. His ult's yep. pretty much already out. They're about to go into rush again. Both teams need to make a move on the pit right now, because if they don't, the other team will. At least they need to get a, make a move on Jakira there. Yep. They certainly do. LC up to a uh, pretty hefty 120 dual damage at this point. Yeah. And NWA without Jakiro really does not want to contest the pit here. 
with neither Chiro nor Spearbreaker to just kind of casually enter like that. We're gonna yep. throw the uh, stupid little acorn in at least. Get vision Ooh. on the LC here. Kind of contest this again. Right. Okay. Ramanola just kind of randomly dies. Spearbreaker eats an entire Luna oh, ult there. Eclipse. Well, it's just a fantasy kind of showing. This long yep. battle over Roshan. So we're coming to an end. Alchemist just kind of beating up the support on the side while it happens. Then getting winners cursed very casually. Okay. His ult's down. His ult is down. His yeah, ult is down. Is. He's gonna take oh. the Aegis. He's gonna take oh Conker God, too. Owning. What? Barely gets into gets out of vision there. All right, never seen a Hulk without ult do that much. I think that was a. Uh, in fairness, that is a little bit more. Conker just kind of not really having much to say for himself in terms of items or anything. I do feel like that was uh that was actually a bigger disaster for Willow to fancy than it looked. You know, they they basically they got Aegis for one reason and they weren't able to execute it at all. Yep. Just completely wasted that. And this is definitely the point where NWA is a one man team right now. Like, it is all Alchemist. Yeah, look at that note worth. Yep. 11k gold advantage, and it is legitimately all on him. It's a, almost a Greek tragedy situation. You know, it's very easy as a high and mighty commentator to say something like, you know, well, I could have done something about that. But I will say, my analysis is I don't think it was that hard to shut down the Alk this game. It just seemed like they just didn't have much of a intention to do that. She was a little confusing to I me. Know, they, they do have an Enchanted Quiver, so yeah, it's the yeah, start yeah. of something greater. Enchanted Quiver on a team that's 100% useless on, so... I mean, hey, they could get it for the first shot of a little shredder. Yeah, I guess they could. One thing I will note... Even though the last few minutes have been all Alchemist... NWA uh, does not actually have a very significant uh, objective advantage. They got the T2 down a bot. That's about it. Yep. They're also up the T1 here at top. That a T1 at this point in uh, Dota history really does not mean too much. Especially a T1 in the offlane, like the worst place to have it. NWA takes the outposts here. Dig is going to affirm something, so that's good. Does have a big impact on a uh, triangle access, but that's about it, yeah. I'm gonna duel the Ricky right in front of the whole world, too. Just barely oh, not gonna win it, actually. Very close to uh, winning that there. And we drop the Eclipse on the two guys getting Wolverine ulted. That's, that's not fine. too great. Eclipse up, paces it. Well, it certainly didn't there, and it is not paying dividends now. Oh god, Elk. Oh god, Elk. I can't believe it. This horrific idea. Naughty flames something in it owns. <laughs> I, I, I'm about to start flaming Willow Twisted Fantasy in a minute here. <laughs> I don't want to say, you know, how how many times in this match am I going to say something to the effect of this shouldn't be working, but it is. There is no logical reason they should have allowed this to work, but they have. This is actually a problem we had in the first series. Again, it's a bookend for the NWA. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. This awful idea, and it works. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. But hey, you know, they are circumventing the major problem that I had with it, you know. The major problem that I had with it is you are competing with your one for farm, and they solved that by not giving the one any farm. 
is to this point basically only subsided off of uh, yep. just pushing ways and getting kills. Which is life if you're on an alchemist team. Right. Not a very idealistic life for Ricky. Not a very idealistic life for the guy at all. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Even then. Really, Ricky seems like an odd one to do this with, because he's both very heavily farm dependent and really does not protect one very well. This is what he's really right. doing at this point. I believe it was uh, the NWA that banned the Wraith King. He seems like the obvious one to uh, pick in this sort of situation. I mean, if your job is just to die for Elk anyway, why not die twice, right? A bristle one yeah, also could have been good. Important stuns out and stuff. Right. Bristle one could have been good because he's going to be peaking fairly early game, and that's basically what you're going to be doing with this strategy. Just try to get as much farm in as short of a time as possible. Establish a lead that cannot be broken. Have the support club beating up the spear breaker here. Else he's looking for a duel. Just does not want it anymore. Randy, you're a doctor, all right? I'm a doctor, yeah. As the doctor of Dota, you know, in some detail, what's the prescription for uh, Willow Twist of Fantasy? And don't just say Luna gets farm, because obviously every game the puzzle is going to get farm. I'm not just going to say Luna get farm, I'm just going to say kill Alchemist. Well, yeah, that's a pretty good one. Alchemist is pretty much one buyback death away from a defeat for his team more or less. So, two deaths, effectively. Yeah, you know, as a lot. Don't get me wrong. But. As it stands, I feel like the second death is going to at least come easier than the first for them. If he so doesn't have the it. team behind him, I don't think he stands up very well in fights. I'm going to get right. some uh, smoke out here. I'm going to row. She's not going to be up for a little while yet. 36 seconds is the earliest possible opportunity, and if we know anything about the LD2L, Roche is never going to be up at the first opportunity. Well, of course. Illusion. Alk, incidentally, at this point, completely six slotted. Yep, as expected. Got Moon Shard to go, that's it. Might also switch for travels, so I, I would say that would not be unexpected. Which means, notably, uh, Alk is right now as bad as he's ever going to get, basically. Moon is uh, opting to maybe feel a little pressed into getting the MKB for the Radiance. Really not be a bad idea. Also helps against uh, old Rick. Yep. Helps against the Ricky. Totally. Could Rick has evasion too. Yep. A very evasion heavy team. So MKB there certainly not a bad idea. LC actually going for the same thing. LC having a full inventory. Yeah. Penta Edge Sword on the die here. That could be very interesting. If LC were willing to get rid of that Vembrace, that could uh, have a pretty high impact, I think. And it seems she is. Oh, throws it away. Yep, immediately pulls that thing in. I do like the uh, the touch that she had the Vembrace on agility for the attack speed rather than like fairly useless magic resist in this game. Right. Yeah, it helps you with a macro pie and really nothing else. 
Roche is up as Spirit Breaker, well not up either, as Spirit Breaker was so keen to point out. I thought Spirit Breaker was pinging because Roche was up, instead he's like, hey everybody, Roche isn't here. No. no one's here. Look guys, it's be? nothing. Kunkka outplays the jungle creeps. Yep. Kunkka with a halberd, by the way. Uh. Oh, Ricky has a. Uh, Ricky bought himself a Lincoln's at some point. Just dodged himself a duel. He did. Old Out cannot okay, dodge curse. the uh, winner's curse. Snapfire Oak coming in to, uh, to follow it up. Oh, oh great halberd by the Kunkka and Alk's dead. That's good. That's a very good start. That was almost perfectly done. Yeah. Uh, Kunkka is gonna casually die for this. Yeah, that's a bit sad, but it's life. So is, uh... So is okay, they're kind of, actually. They're kind of crumbling. <laughs> yeah, they have very little to respond to the Spirit Breaker with, it seems. And even less oh. to respond to the Hoodwink. That was perfectly done until this started happening. <laughs> right. They have a duel in not too long. I don't think they're gonna use it. Be very risky. Right. Certainly, the uh, is a very annoying thing about Hoodwink. I think Hoodwink is one of the most sort of inevitable heroes in the game. Like, it is inevitable that Hoodwink is going to mess up your team fight. Basically, no matter what you do. Yep. If your if your ult isn't up, Hoodwink can like make you lose an encounter with very low cooldowns. Just a pretty continuous ability to do that. Right. One of the very many nice things about that hero and its design. Luna gonna go straight into Roche now. Luna actually not, opting not to go for uh, the Manta style this game, which is a bit of an unusual choice. Yeah, it needs MK being said. Right. Saving for buyback, actually. Got eight seconds without Alk still. Doesn't sound like much, it could actually get a lot done in that time, but... It's hard with Spirit Breaker, just kind of continually uh, hovering around the area. Actually going all in on a Luna Illusion there. Yeah, it's uh, to no avail. You get forced out of the Roche pit for yep. this duration of the macro, probably. Just entirely. Right, yeah, they're just scattering. I can tell you this much. The lack of a more traditional pause three has been actually doing good things for them so far, but at this point now, it is going to start really kind of a Alchemist actually shooing boots entirely. Yep. Just uh, opting to use the spider legs instead. Okay, that's wanting the uh, Lankins. pretty smart. They're just trying to get do as many things as possible to uh, make the duel tough, or I make the X tough at least. Yeah. I was just gonna walk back into the finish. Really Roche. killed the elk in that last fight. Just caught him in a really in bad fight. position, and he got, you know, played on by everybody. Uh, Dire or Radiant everybody. immediately take the NWA takes the Aegis. So, up uh, oh, and that was Winner's Curse that just got popped on the Lincolns. Yep. We're gonna be for the Halberd as well. It's kind of a one-time thing, I figure, for uh, the the Lincolns on the on the Alchemists there. I do not think they're going to be, or at least I hope for their sake, they're not going to be making that mistake again. As Snapfire goes down, it's going to be uh, 4v5. Yeah, this makes it, it makes a little more annoying under pressure. So again, on the NWA, just, they really can't go uphill. They have no ability to do so. Bottom tower. Luna's actually got a leveler in her backpack here. Nope. Carrying the flicker here, which is good, it's kind of going to stand in to a degree for her Manta style. At least as far as yeah. the, the uh, purge goes. Purge element of it. There's some nice move speed as well. Right. I remember the old version of the flicker, that was always fun. Just a blank dagger, but worse in every conceivable way. Yeah. Right close to the MKB here, I believe she has it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Down a bit for buyback though, she's gonna need to be a little careful over here. Oh, no, nothing much uh, in her way. Couple of uh, 
Ooh, a couple of sentry coming wounds. up rather quickly. They're charging right at her here. Uh oh. Oh boy. Winner of curse okay. on the uh, spear breaker, but Alks BKB. Yep, Alks BKB and spear breaker was Voldo of what was happening. So uh, ultimately, oh, man. she does not just quite have enough for buyback. That could be very dangerous. Poor Wyver. Yep, Wyvern cliffed herself and uh. Let me just quickly count my treasure and I'll be off. Not in the best spot up that cliff. Flowing it down, they are going to try and uh, uphill at this point. They have a very, uh. Very good position to be doing that with. Yep. Help with his Lincolns, and somebody else's Lincolns also gets put on him. I'm gonna lower through. I think they're actually gonna duel the Alk there, but uh, they just really can't do that. Yeah, especially with an Aegis. Yep. You take out the Wyvern. They're gonna get Ricky. Likely going to get Ricky anyway. Uh, barely dies, barely just like dies. last yeah. tick. Though uh, LCA is going to die for this. Spearbreaker nearly unintentionally charging into that uh, into that spawn room. Yeah. NWA taking the uh, racks here. Yep, certainly are. It's funny actually how much the little balls confound this for uh, for Willow Twisted Fantasy. They really have nothing to do about the Lincolns. Every single thing they could use to pop Lincolns is super undesirable. I think the best yeah, thing they have the is uh Luna Lucent Beam. Yeah, the Luna Lucent Beam and I think the uh the the initial hit of a splinter shot can pop it. Yep. And that's it. Illusion. The very least, and nothing else, uh, Willow Twist of Fantasy has a pretty good lineup for uh, for blocking out against supers. Yeah. With the Kunkka, with the Luna, with even the um, the Snapfire as well. Snapfire fairly good at it. Winter over and fairly Warburg decent at it. Has a has a pretty spammable spell that messes him up. And even though LC, you know, she's just going to be doing overwhelming odds. Even overwhelming odds at least does something for you here. I thought Alk might have had Manta, but no, he's just uh, in some cool illusion runes, I think. Yep. To in their jungle with an illusion. Aegis just uh, expired on the Alchemist there. And I return his radiance to his stash of all things to be put in a way was that. It really shows you the uh, the influence that that Lincolns and the BKB has. Faster. This is an interesting, notable thing. Alchemist 6 slotted had to get two defensive items, so he's actually really sort of 4.5 slotted. He's going to uh, nullify his cap a little bit. You know, even though it looks pretty bad right now, Willow Twist of Fantasy by no means are actually out of this game. I think the next fight is going to decide a lot. It could. I think, uh, I think really almost it would be better for Willow Twist of Fantasy to try and avoid fighting for a while. I think they have a decent ability to do that as long as they're being aware of their surroundings and all that. Yep. Just avoid the fight, get some items up on the, L on the Luna, get some items up on the LC. You know, Alex is as bad as he's ever going to be, and he's still mortal. That's been proven, he's still mortal. Actually, the biggest issue they're really having in the last uh, five to ten minutes is uh, the Spirit Breaker. Oh, yeah. They really have nothing to say about the guy. And Aeon Disc on... Uh, on the hoodwink there. 
NWA really feels like they're just a hundred percent defensive items. If you look at it. Right against yeah. that uh you know Legion Lunar combo really now. Right. Especially gonna need that AM disc against that. One thing to one thing to note, Luna or not Luna, L C was around 120 dual damage back at like twenty minutes. This is true. Four man smoke. Four man smoke looking at Ricky. They ain't gonna find him. Ricky's just walking over to Alk. And Spirit Breaker. Die. Gotta scan him out. I got no vision around. Ricky, uh... Okay. Ricky, I believe, uh... Wind Waker on the Spirit Breaker. Ricky, I believe, thought he walked under a sentry there, but, uh... Not actually the case. They didn't actually have vision on him for that. Smoke goes nowhere. That's, uh... Alright, curse the bird. Why not? It's a little embarrassing. Oh, yeah, that was an illusion. No, okay. Yeah. That would be funny. It's not ultimately what happened, though. Eh, whatever. We'll be back up for the next fight. I actually don't know about this. Looks like they want to go up now. Actually. Your breaker again, just hassling mid. Ricky really wanted to go on the Luna here. Ultimately uh, decides against it. Just pulls out. Yep. To the ice path where Kunk is gonna axe. Very sad. Spray Breaker charging under the three, looking for Kunkka though. Ends up uh. They have a Wind Waker there, I think. Yeah, that's uh. One yeah. Waker on Spirit Breaker. I mentioned that in the last fight. Keep up, eh? That old, uh, that old moving tornado. Always classic. Yep. Spirit Breaker already between his Ags, his uh, Shard, and the Halberd. was already very difficult to kill. Now that One Waker just really stepping it up. Spirit Breaker yep. almost playing with no consequences. It, is, it would basically take a duel when he's not bulldozed, I think, to uh, kill him. More or less. Yep. Rush back up. NWA once again just uh, gonna casually just eat him for breakfast here. <sighs> Wyvern failing to blink. It's a very good charging for her actually. No We're crossing a lot of hostile territory, but no. Nope. That chooses to avoid. Uh, 40k it. net worth lead. Yeah. Yeah, better. Pretty considerable. It might be the biggest net worth lead of, uh, of the old two all so far. Seems like it should be like 20k, right? Because Elk's 20k ahead. Everybody else is about on parity with their uh, rating count or with their dire counterparts. Yeah, Legion. The supports are pretty far behind, though. Yeah, I guess that's true. Things started so great for LC, but got really written out of this game. Slow siege continues. Yep. Hopefully, uh, I know there's a lot of really long games this week. Hopefully, this isn't on that list. I don't need another. Destiny ends around 60. Airbreaker charging in, going for the Luna here. Since they're behind the tower and then just one wakes away. Yep. Alex is gonna shred a tower here, they're not even actually gonna use Glyph for it. Same Glyph for the T4s it seems. Luna just getting shredded over here. Winner's curse, but again on the bulldozed Spear Breaker. Oh man, Gotham's causing so many problems. Got the Snapfire ult in response, but it accomplishes almost nothing. Got the duel on the Ricky at least, but probably not worth a rack. 
Consolation prize. You're gonna get your hero as well. The Aeon disc, but you know. Don't waste as much time as humanly possible, and HS is gonna snipe the kill from Luna. <laughs> Alright, <there you laughs> sad. Go. Poor Ricky, still not really worth very much this game. You know, it was for a very long time, it was a one man show. Now, at least it's a two man show for the NWA. Yep. It's the unkillable spear breaker and the uh, alchemist there. Illusion! Illusion! Making a, making a move out here a yep. little bit. No real hope to, uh, to do much. Kunk again, a uh, Shiva's guard. She was guard a deceptively high impact game. At the very least, it's going to mean Spearbreaker is abilities only. Okay. Fun Wink just going to get completely uh, uh, shot there. Actually, the wins the duel with the Yules there with the Wind Waker, I believe. Who Yules <laughs> the Hood Wink? Oh I no! I believe that was Spearbreaker with the Wind uh, Waker because I can target allies. Yeah. It is on cooldown for what would be the appropriate amount of time. Alchemist died. Help. Alchemist died. Alchemist died yeah. again. He certainly did. That's yeah. not good. Well, there you go. See how much they can do with this push. Yeah. He does have buy. Yep, we'll use it. But he has uh, another 15 seconds before he's got ult. I don't like they're gonna risk it though. They might be forced into risking it at this rate. No, they're. I'm gonna finish the pull satanic. Out, pull out. I said that for a little bit. Uh, probably get butterfly maybe too, or just throw away that core stuff. That's fine. You know what she's gonna get for butterfly? What's she gonna put up? I Actually, guess is more accurately. Just uh, another bootless. Could be. Really the only option she has, unless she just wants to throw away the quarter stuff. Right. Which is an option. It's not it actually... necessarily an option I would begrudge anyone for. Her. Oh, well, Vern is randomly dying there. That's her dieback as well. She's going to be out for ages. Yep. Now, notably. If Alk dies again, he's going to be down for over 200 seconds, because he bought back with uh, about 99 remaining. Yep. Will Alk die again, is the question. We're going to make it uh, make life tough for him here. He's going to eat Conka for breakfast, so... Snap ult coming in. is not doing terribly much, though. Everyone's BKB'd. Luth going down. Oh, Luth buying back. Him. Everything falling on Ricky's head. As that uh, Kunkka Super Torrent really, really ruining life for everybody involved. And we are going to get turned away here. Now you just can't catch up. The amount of problems that Gotham has caused in this game is really just outstanding, honestly. Yeah, they legitimately have a lineup. They can't deal with Spirit Breaker at all. Especially with that Wind Waker. Like, they really need... Unfortunately, at this point, they really need one of their guys to pick up uh, Sheepstick, basically. Everybody says the uh, the bot lane is somebody else's problem. Kunk yep. finally the man to walk over there. Notably again, though, with all that... The uh, NWA still kind of failed to finish the job there. I wonder if kind of casually walking right back uh, down here. Sparebreaker going after the uh, Kunkka. Turns around pretty quick though. Yep. Actually, all of NWA is there. NWA is split up right now. Yeah, they certainly are. How TP it back. We were looking a bit like uh, like Navi in that alliance game there, but you know, eventually. 
Yeah, I feel like, uh, I don't Little know if Willow Twist and Fantasy realize the extent they actually, like the extent of the positioning there. Alchemist is going to eat a boat. Alchemist is going to eat everything in the world, actually. DKB finally comes up. And that's a dieback for Luna. Oh, boy. Probably it for them. Alright. They'll do what they can. Yep. I can't particularly say I feel like... Uh, these guys are going to have a great impact on the defense here. You know, at least they are going to try and defend it out, but... Yep. It's the last Waldo's. week. It's a, potentially one of the last games you're uh, ever going to play with these boys. You know? Right. The most you can out of it. Yep, I really would be surprised if we see basically any GG's this week. And it looks like true to the predict predictions, at the very least, is decided at 60. Yep. With, uh, Wolves with Fancy no longer really having a realistic path for victory. They're just gonna straight up just destroy their base here. Not much they can do. Yep. So, with that all being said, um,. Unfortunately, uh, it's not going to be sunshine and rainbows in this analysis. Uh, I, I said this actually all the way back. Again, just bookending it all the way back in the uh, NWA and uh, MF Doomed game back in week one. This is a game that I don't really feel like NWA should have had, to be honest with you. I feel like um, Willow Twisted Fantasy, they were not playing their best here today. There were a few, a few kind of gimmies that I feel like they let slip through their fingers. You know, for example, perhaps most notably, as it uh, really was probably the deciding factor in the game, the uh, lack of uh, attention given to the alchemist there really did not do them any favors. You know, Elk Mid, the biggest problem with it is that he's in such a vulnerable position without somebody else with him. He's not a great laning hero, on his own certainly. And uh, I feel like some rotations there could have really changed history for these guys. That's all it really takes. He's getting down a few times early, and he's pretty much uh, not a written, not a write-off per se, but you give yourself a lot of advantages, especially on a lineup like this, which is really about just taking an advantage as early as possible and making it hard as possible for Willow to some fantasy to uh, build up against that, you know? Right. Feel like there are a bit too many missed calls here. A bit too many, you know, like, for example, one thing we saw in several team fights was uh, Spirit Breaker getting ulted by uh, the Winter Wyvern when he has his bulldoze up, so you have a two second Winter's Curse. You had a few, yeah. uh, you had a few curses that entirely ate up a Luna or a uh, Snapfire ult, basically. Just ended up uh, doing no damage with them. And while the dual idea started off very strong, it felt like they really didn't have much to do once they started building around that anymore. You know, Luna, just, uh, I don't know. The Luth Luna, it never really seemed to click. It never really seemed to come that moment where Luna just got really scary and started bowling over people, you know? Well. Yeah. Even though she was six-slotted at the end, and I do feel like a little bit of that was just in the sort of positioning and the sort of acting of the hero. I think there were some uh, some map awareness issues. It's just things were not great for Willow Twisted Fantasy in this matchup. That much is absolutely certain. At the very least, we know they're going to be on uh, in the next game. So uh, look forward to that one.